Today I'm going to give you a look inside how I go about brainstorming story ideas. Stick around to the end because the last tip is my secret weapon to fleshing out a story. But before we get into that, let me share what has been helpful in terms of approaching the idea phase. I wish I could say I was one of those people who have so many ideas at the top of their mind all the time. I'm not. I'm somebody who has to prep myself to get into a state where I receive ideas. And here are some of the things that I do that seem to open my mind to new ideas. I find that if I go for a walk, if I have a long bath, if I lie outside looking at the stars, or if I take a notebook and then go on a date somewhere by myself, <laughs> I find that these activities help me disconnect from everything that I have to do in the day and they allow myself to open my mind to story ideas. From here, I like to draw on cinematic moments in my life for inspiration, or sometimes I get ideas from just listening to a song. So I'm moved by feeling. I don't necessarily recreate the exact moments I've lived in the past. I more reflect on the feelings that I felt in that time and then allow a story to come from there because I find it sometimes restrictive <laughs> to write exactly what has happened to me because I get a bit sentimental about details that don't necessarily serve a story. So I'm not sure if that's helpful to you, but I am moved by feeling. However, there are some fun activities that you could do that act as so much of a prompt for idea generation. And that could be maybe looking at an existing piece of work and then asking yourself why you're drawn to it, but what you could perhaps inject to it to make it completely original. And you can start big and then narrow it down. For an example, let's say the holiday moved you. I know it moved me. Here we have a story of two people swapping locations to go on adventures, finding love, finding their feet, all the good stuff. Now we have two women doing that. And to start big, let's say you make this a Marvel movie where two superheroes have to swap worlds. And that is a big enough prompt for two completely different adventures that is likely to unfold. Now they could find love, they could find their feet but how it would play out would be very different to the holiday. So that is a fun idea of looking at what moves you and then brainstorming ideas, but not limiting yourself on how big, how fancy, how outrageous these ideas may start because you can edit them down to be something that really speaks to you. So creating a space to open my mind to ideas is step one. And then step two is reflecting on what moves me. These seem to be the two things that unlock my creativity and allow for ideas to come through. So I generally stay in the States until I've got a couple of ideas. I don't just jump onto the first one. I like to get at least two or three ideas during this time that I've set up. And then maybe I'll know straight away which idea I want to write about, but that's not usually the case, if I have to be honest. I usually sit with one or two of the ideas that I like, and I'm not really sure which one to pick. And then I'll give myself a week or two where I'll just continue with life. And then at the back of my mind, there'll be one, two, sometimes three ideas that I really liked, but there will always be one idea that I seem to be excited about. I might not know why. It's not necessarily because it's the best idea, but what I find works for me is choosing the idea that seems to have the best energy around it. <laughs> My husband would mock me for using the term energy to describe that. <laughs> but there's usually one idea that I seem to be most excited about over the span of one or two weeks. And then I'll just go with the idea that I want to write. But that said, what I have also done in the past, which has been helpful, is write log lines for these ideas. And then I'll share these log lines with friends, family, or my amazing screenwriting consultants. And I will ask them for which idea speaks most to them. So it's nice to see what moves you, but also from a list of ideas that moved you, which ideas actually move others. It's vulnerable sharing your ideas, especially in this early phase, but it could be helpful. I know it's been helpful to me. So as you can see, this isn't a quick process for me. It's at least an hour to an hour and a half of phase one of setting up the space for an idea and idea generation to take place. And then it's between one or two weeks of letting the ideas marinate in my mind or sharing the ideas with people before I actually come up with the idea that I want to focus on. I feel I just also need to say that this isn't prescriptive. This is just what works for me. You might find that ideas come to you in a completely different way. And if that is the case, let me know in the comments below. But the point of today's video is to just share some of the things that work for me and maybe one or two of the things that I'm gonna share with you today will be helpful to you. 
But back to the process. The next thing that I like to do is spend some time thinking about how I want to feel when I'm writing the story, but also how I want people to feel when they are reading my work. So something that I like to do during this phase is create a bit of a playlist with some songs that remind me of the feeling. Now, I only go back to this playlist when I feel like I'm drifting off course a little bit or when I want to be reminded of what feeling is rooting the entire story. I don't listen to this throughout <laughs> the course of writing because the last thing I want to do is get over this playlist or get over the feeling. So I just like to have a playlist on standby as something that I can keep dipping into whenever I feel like my well of inspiration or my well of emotion is running dry. So I find that once I have a firm understanding of the feeling that I'm going after, a genre tends to emerge. And to get a better idea of genre, I find that the next step in my process is such a game changer. So this game changer that I'm referring to are tonal comps. And it helps having tonal comps as early as this phase already, because I found that when people are marketing my screenplay on my behalf, it's actually one of the first things they ask for. So being aware of these early on actually serve as helpful boundaries for me to play inside. So to find these tonal comps, I look at what books or films have moved me within the genre. And then from here, I tend to look at what themes emerge. Once I'm aware of the different themes, I ask myself why these themes are effective. And more so than that, I ask myself why specifically it is that these themes are moving me. Let's look at Love Actually as an example here. I love this film. The theme is about how love conquers all. It's an uplifting theme that fits the first point of knowing how you want people to feel when they read your work. I'm sure we can all agree that it's helpful if your theme is an extension of the feeling that your story evokes. So when it was time for me to write a screenplay, well, I used Love Actually as a tonal car because I wanted to write a film that had that similar uplifting feeling, but that also had a similar theme. Different, of course, because where Love Actually is about love conquering all, my film was about how lives and relationships evolve and are forever changed by a kiss. So I looked at what worked and what I enjoyed from Love Actually, and then I found my own way from there. So the point at this part of the process is to know what the theme is. I find that my story gets confusing the minute that I veer off from the theme. So keeping the theme top of mind is helpful for every part of the writing process, whether it's dialogue, whether it's scenes. I find that the theme is, like I mentioned earlier, those boundaries that create the space for you to play inside. In a few moments, I'll share that secret weapon that I mentioned earlier. But before we get to that, a few weeks ago, I shared some of the lessons that I gained from completing Shonda Rhimes' masterclass for like the third or fourth time. <laughs> but what I find particularly valuable is how she wants you to flesh out the lives of your characters. So before moving on to any other parts of the story, it helps to know the who, what, where, when, and whys of your character's journey. Who are they? What do they want? What is the story about? What is their biggest fear? How do they react if their biggest fear had to come to life? If you want more ideas of questions, check out that video I made or do Shonda Rhimes' masterclass. But the point at this part in the process is to fill up your character's lives. Having an understanding of who your characters are and what they want from this entire journey is a great place to start, at least I find so. But then from here, it's helpful to know what your story is about. So I have made a video where I list a whole bunch of writing prompts that I use that sort of serve as a springboard for me to just hop in the right direction of where the story needs to go. So I'll link that video for you above or below in the description for you to check out but I find that writing prompts, it's, it's like having a conversation with someone, maybe even being in some sort of a writing room, I guess. I find that it's easy to bounce things off someone. So having somebody ask me questions that I can answer or having somebody ask me questions that makes me think. This is a great step in terms of figuring out what my story is about and the direction that I want the story to go or the circumstances that I want to create for my character to navigate through because I know who they are and I know how they would respond, but I don't necessarily know what the challenges are that they are going to have to face. So figuring out what the story is about and using prompts, that seems to be the best way for me to figure out what the story is actually about. <laughs> So we're one step away from me sharing my secret weapon with you. But before we get to that, the final thing that I like to do in my writing process is figure out the worlds. So you may have dipped your mind into the world of your characters if you came across a prompt. 
that encourage you to do so from the previous step. But I find that it is incredibly useful to take some time to focus on the worlds or the settings specifically. Because if we had to use the holiday as an example yet again, we can see a brilliant example of how stories develop in two different locations. There is something to that larger than life LA mansion with movie veterans in the neighborhood, as well as the tiny cottage in the middle of the English country. Both locations are rich, but for completely different reasons. I've heard it said that Nancy Myers, who wrote The Holiday, uses Pinterest as her space to create mood boards for the locations that she wants her films to be set up in. So Pinterest is a helpful tool for anybody who is interested in brainstorming the locations. But let's just look at one more example. So yes, we've looked at the holiday where we have LA and the UK, but then we've also got the mansion and we've got the tiny cottage. But if we even have to scale it down even more, we could look at room as an example. An entire world is created within the tiny confines of a small room. I guess things get a lot more complicated if you are looking at building worlds like you would find in Marvel movies or worlds that you would find in animation. We could look at Inside Out as an example of how a world was built just between feelings existing in a person's mind. I mean, that's incredible, but it's something I don't have experience in, so I don't really feel like I can talk much on that. So I think I'm just gonna sit here and admire that kind of world building from afar. This has been quite the process of brainstorming story ideas, but how I like to wrap up my process is using a technique that I did not invent myself. It's a technique that I've heard so many people speak about on multiple different podcasts and it's called morning pages. So I created a video where I actually started doing morning pages for a week. It, wow, <laughs> blew my mind how effective it was back then. And it's something that I've incorporated into my writing process now. I didn't originally know it was from a course called The Artist's Way, which I started, I haven't finished, I actually want to get back into doing that. Let me know if you've done it in the comments below. But Julia Cameron, the author of The Artist's Way or the magical mind behind the whole idea, she created this process called Morning Pages. And what you do is every morning, first thing, you write three pages, longhand, no judgment. You just write. Even if you don't know what to write, you write, I don't know what to write. And I have found this to be a key that just unlocks my mind in terms of helping everything flow out. And if I have to think about why it works, I think it's because I am creating time for myself to just sit in the idea that I want to form. So even if I don't know what I want to write about or if nothing's coming, I just sit there until something comes and something always comes. I usually find that the first page is easy for me to get through. The second page is where things start getting a little bit difficult, but the third page is where there's always breakthrough. So this has been a secret weapon that I have used and that I just love using. I'm not consistent with it as consistent as I should be, but I like to write in chunks. So I'll focus on a project for a certain period of time and then I like to have a little break. Then I will get back into a same project or a different project or I have two projects going on at the same time. But just with the season of life that I'm in, I don't write every day. So I'll at least do one page of morning pages every day. But when I'm really in the process of fleshing out a story, then morning pages is the thing that makes the whole process so much easier. So I hope that it will be a helpful tool to you. But there we go. This is how I go about brainstorming ideas. And I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, give this video a thumbs up. Thank you. And I will leave a video for you in the end screen that I think you'll enjoy if you enjoyed this video. So see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.